Okay, so previously, let me start the timer here. So previously, all you could see was just the, the image of the controller here, but now I actually have an input overlay for everything here. So if I hit the eject button, which is going to be on the upper right of the, uh, the monitor here, you can see it lights up down here and it actually shows for some of the buttons which button I'm pressing. And then when I let go, it stays for an extra second and then it and then it disappears. Um, so for like cockpit hatch on the right, ignition, start, you can actually tell what buttons I'm pressing now. So for the for the weird buttons down here, like like the buttons on the lower right of the screen um, for the multi monitor, like if I press this button before, you'd have no idea what the fuck I was doing with this. But now it says, hey, multi monitor, that is the sub mode select for the multi monitor button. Um, if I hit this button here on the center, that is the communication four button. If I turn the rotary, you can actually see down here, the rotary dial is moving. And anytime that the, uh, the game lights up a button, it will also light up on here. Um, so the, the times where that actually comes into play in terms of the gameplay is um, there's a startup sequence that puts on this cool little light show. Um, anytime you get hit uh, by enemy fire that does enough damage to actually hurt you, um, it'll actually flash the whole controller, and you'll be able to see that. It'll go like... <laughs> um, and also, whenever the eject button is flashing, um, this will this will start flashing like that when uh, when the game wants you to eject. Um, also, the calm buttons on the center part will also light up whenever there is need for the the calm function in the game. Hey, Hywin. Um, let's see. And the thing that I had to fix earlier, just before the stream, was the toggle switches. You can see them right down here. Uh, some of those, the the text form was getting stuck on screen. So sorry, you won't you won't be able to see which switches I'm hitting here. But there's oxygen supply, FLIT control, VT location measurement, buffer material, and fuel flow rate. So that's that's what all those are. Um, down here is the rotation lever. So this um, this left joystick can only go left and right. So this is this is how I'm showing that. There's also an analog stick on top of that controller. Um, that you can press in like that. And then the right stick here, this stick will stay wherever you put it. So if I move it down to the bottom right and let go, it'll stay there. So that uh, that shows that. We got trigger, lock on, main weapon, and all that. So there you go. It should be a little bit easier maybe to kind of follow what's going on. And then of course we got the pedals here. So throttle, brake, uh, and then dodge. So dodge, brake, throttle for those. And then of course the the gear shifter thing down here. Um, this kind of sticks sometimes. So sometimes this this does weird things. Like you can you can see here, if I go all the way up to the top, sometimes it just randomly goes into reverse. <laughs> like like right there. Between these two gears, it just goes into reverse and I don't know why it does that. Like maybe I gotta get out the, the can of deoxid or something. Um but yeah so that's uh that is all that. Let's uh, let's get to it, shall we? Okay, so I'm not sure. Okay, so it's F1 and lock on. There we go. Um, okay, I'm not sure where we kind of left off in the uh, campaign. So I don't really want to... Did I have to delete my pilot? Okay, so ah, five is is still there. Next mission is four. Um, four might be the. Yeah, I think I want to do a warm up mission before I I go on to four because four was the uh, um, one that actually required skill, <laughs> I guess. So let me let me jump into a. Uh, um. Yeah, the, the naval port. This one, I remember well. This is the one where you have to have your teammates not die or kill you. And then when you get to the end, you have to fight a boat. And then the boat can just completely destroy you in like two hits. So I want to warm up before we get to that one. 
Uh, let's just do this one. Okay. Hey, True Train. Okay. And then I think you have to do those other ones with the, the crappier, crappy mechs. So we'll use the, the decider. Okay. Because right, I don't I don't want to get used to using the actually good ones right here at the at the get go. All right, so you can see here right at the start, that's how it tells you which button you have to press. It lights up on the controller. And then right after this should be the light show. Oh, no, that's after this. Okay, right here. There you go. That's what that looks like. It's pretty cool. Okay, and then I hit the button right when those get past the line there. Okay. All right, so we got the machine gun on the sub the sub weapon and then the 315 SB is the the cannon. Okay. So we got to wait for the boys to roll out here. So let's see. Do the the good old wash in there. What I got for main weapons? Okay, we got the machine gun and the cannon. And if I remember correctly, you want to not use the lock-on. So that uh, that sound means that I'm I'm locked on by something. And that is the incoming fire. Those things you can you can use the lock on on. All right. Okay, get my sea legs back here. So I'm trying to remember exactly what the difficulty was with that uh, that naval port mission. But I think a, a large part of the difficulty for that one was your teammates are all idiots. What the hell is that popping in the background? Okay, I don't remember that being a thing. And for the kind of the fine adjustments on aim, um, mostly has to be done with the uh, the left stick rather than the right stick, because just even moving the right stick a little bit moves it a lot. So it it ends up not being anywhere near as precise as uh, as you'd like it to be. At least for side to side. For up and down, it kind of doesn't really matter.
rock in the way. Yep. All right. I think I'm remembering how to steal battalion here. Okay. So yeah, that uh, that's probably good enough for a warm up. Let's hit that eject button. Okay. All right, so oh yes, this is this is a Sarge. Very disappointed with us as usual. <sighs> okay. All right, so mission four of the campaign, because that one's yeah yeah. So mission three was the just run past everything and get to the the endpoint mission. And then this one was uh, blow up the artillery on the, the cliff above your train. And then this one's the one I just did. Okay. And then this one's the, the actual hard mission. <laughs> okay. Um, combat points, 15,000. So I remember combat points being a thing that needed to be monitored uh, during the playthrough because if you if you run out of enough combat points to buy a new mech or v sorry vt in this universe um it's a game over so things that are game overs in this game running out of combat points um having your your vt blow up without you ejecting uh that's not only a game over it also deletes your save it, very important um and I think that's about it. All the other circumstances, if you if you at least eject, you can you can buy yourself back in. But all the other things, it's it's started from the beginning. Have fun. Um so for this I need This is the first mission where you need to have supplies. So I need to buy those. Okay, 2,000 points. Alright. Okay. And you, you can't just stock up on the supply crates because they... Uh, um, they do carry over. And if you do... If you do lose your VT, you have to buy another one. So, like, you need 3,000 credits to buy this one. Um, and that's like... That's like a fourth of the money that I already had. So... <laughs> You have to only buy exactly what you need. Um, okay, so channel one is Argus. Channel two is a wagon master. Three is Oscar one. I'm trying to remember if telling Oscar one to form up on me actually mattered or just let him let him go do whatever. I think it was just go go let him do whatever. Um, so we're okay on that. We have one supply. So I have the 315 SB and the machine gun. Um, the machine gun is useless. So, okay. Same V2. Okay, we're going to say no. Because for this mission, I believe you want um, multiple cannons and not have the machine gun. So we need to get rid of this or change it to... Um, so that one's 19, 17. So if I get rid of the, I think one fuel tank. Yeah, because because I'm going to have to resupply halfway through the mission. So I'm going to be slightly overweight here, but I think this is what I have to do to to be successful at this mission. Hello, Jeff. Um, OK. OK, OK, OK. All right. Uh, so com buttons. So com one is receive call. Com two is request repeat. Three is request supply. Four is request rescue. Okay. So yeah, if I was going to tell Argus one anything, it would be request aid rescue. Okay. All right. Let's give this a try. Oh boy. <laughs> I remember this this mission being way too hard for where it is in the game, but all right. Okay.
Okay. Alright, so I'm gonna be in the front right now. So there's the... The giraffes are on the right. And I believe if I just shoot right now, it's, um... It's gonna be out of range anyways. How did that... Okay, fine. Okay. And then these down here. Okay. That'll destroy those. Okay. Alright. Yeah, the game deleting your save is, is really fucked up. And that's... That's how they... How they decided. It's like a FromSoft game. Uh, okay, it's locked on. So I think starting with these, these are the scare faces. Oh, that's right. There's there's boats that come after you. All right. Oh, you're actually on this side. So you can see the the controller lights up. And actually. Alright, we're gonna, we're gonna give this scare face the business here. Okay. Alright. Alright, get up. Come at me. So one one teammate made it across the bridge. And of course they're they're like right behind me. Nice. No! Okay. I am taking way too much damage here. <sighs> okay. And of course now the, the other teammate decided to join us over here. Okay. So I'm currently at uh, half, half armor right now, which is not great. So I'm going to have to have my teammates take some hits for me here. Because I need to go across this bridge. Um, I need to take out these boats. So that my teammates don't get uh, hit by the boats. There's another boat over there. Okay. Don't... Don't 
fall off the bridge. Uh. Okay, that one. Okay. All right, so I think this this hangar to the left is indestructible. All right, so once I clear out this area, all right, you got to wait until they fall down before. So, um, I need to block my teammates from going across the bridge best I can. Hopefully without aggroing the VTs over there. Um, so Wagon Master was calm too. Okay. So I think if I just get right at the the first part of this here, I can get a few shots in on them. Wagon Master, this is Oscar 3. Do you copy? Over. This is Oscar 3, requesting supplies. Send supply chopper ASAP. This is Wagon Master. Roger that. The supply chopper is on its way. All right, Wagon Master. Okay. So I think I'm almost barely within the effective range. of these things. Well, that's a problem. Okay, so I need to get over behind this. Okay. All right, I got to get my ass over over here. And it's time to cheese out a battleship. Okay. So the battleship can't hit you if you're if you're over here. So I gotta take out this scare face first. And this is exactly why I got multiple multiple reloads of my cannon. Okay. 
All right, so. I need to turn this way. And now I need to cheese out this thing. So it sounds like there's there's a boat that's still one of the little little boats is after me. So the boat is still distracted by my teammates. I'm looking at the right side of the screen here, and if it says miss, then that means I've blown up everything that I can. Okay. There's still something else over here to hit. Okay. So you have to hit enough... enough things to eventually sink the boat. Okay. All right. It's the, the upper left reticle is the one that counts here. Okay. Okay. I can't actually tell if those hit or not. It there there's something there according to the game, but okay. All right, maybe these will Okay. I think those are the boats coming after me. Oh, we got it. Okay. Sick. Yo, my teammates actually survived. <laughs> All right. Got them. We sunk their battleship. Okay. All right. Whew. Now we're we're good for like three missions. Uh, okay. Jesus. And I did that without a resupply too. All right. Well, I used up a resupply, but <laughs> it didn't it didn't quite make it. Okay. Good. All right. And then mission 5 is Expeditionary support, second gen. Oh yeah, yeah, there's a cutscene after this. The clean sweep operation. Hams. Yeah, this game is is quite something. One day I'll beat it. If this game didn't have the save deleting thing. Don't tell me that's the new type VT. 
Looks like it came right out from a garbage compactor. A garbage compactor. Cool cutscene. Cool. I'll pass. All right. Yeah, so this one's the the village thing. Here are the cases. Um, so I'll get some supply for this, but I probably won't need them. And then the boom box is just. Wait, I can I can get the prominence. Okay. All right. So we got a prominence. That's the the Gen two, Gen two VT. Hey boys. Um. All right, so this one... God, I probably should have taken notes where all the cases were. So there's three cases. Did I? I did. Way to go, past Purry. That's where all the cases are, or two of them at least. Um, okay. Sure. Same VT and equipments, no, because we want we want to use the good one, the new one. Okay. Yeah, it's a great map, but that that that's accurate to what it looks like. Um. So this one, you you don't really need to use this, or actually that you do want to use, but the the rifle and the other thing you don't really need. Um, 30, so I'll change this out for machine gun if there is one. Howitzer, missiles. There is no big machine gun in this, apparently. For this, this unit. Okay. Well, I'll stick with that then. Is there one that has more ammo? Eighty two or five. Okay, well, sure, fine. Um two fuel tanks, no optional armor. Alright, let's do it. So this mission's pretty easy. This is the hey good job on beating the the actually difficult mission. Now you give you an easy one. Hello, blue team. Okay. I think the light show they give you for this one is the same. Yeah, it's the same every time. Okay. All right. VTs rise up. Um. So also, before I forget from last time, this is a very important button right here. This one. All right. helicopter somewhere. Uh, I can hear it. I forget what that indicator was. Oh, I think that's the the FSS is what that is. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the look of this game is very unique. Okay. Especially with the you have to view the whole game world through through a CRT. That's uh that's pretty unique. Okay. I can't 
Can't turn too quickly, otherwise you're going to fall over. And I think the last few times I've done this mission, I have run out of... of sub-weapon machine gun ammo. change okay so this is also one of those levels where you really want to um to milk as much uh as many credits as you can out of it because you're gonna need them later but not so many that you need to to resupply So at the very least, you want to take out all the all the VTs. Because I'm trying to think what the level after this was, and I think the level after this was the really dumb, like reconnaissance level. There's one, so you got to get three of those to complete the level. Okay. There's another briefcase over here. No. Nope. I don't think my map actually mentioned which way is north or anything. <laughs> so my map is a little useless. Yeah, so if you're if you're about to tip over, if you hold down um brake and the dodge buttons or pedals at the same time you can uh you can save yourself from falling over okay all right i think that's it so i'm looking for yeah there we go there's one Weird that the the little target boxes disappear. Okay. Oh. Okay. One more.
And it is probably over here, if I had to guess. Okay. Don't need that on. Don't see it. Uh, I remember getting one in the middle of the map here. I wonder if those are if those are just respawning. They might be. Um, well, shit, I, <laughs> I need to make a better map next time, I guess, because I do not see it. I still have full armor, so it's not a big deal that I'm getting shot here. It might be over here. Hey, Aiden. Are you hyped for the new... What was it? Crusader Kings... game? So I seem to recall you're, you're into those. Ah oh, yes, yeah, totally gonna gonna clear the campaign this time. Okay, I've clearly already been here because that's that's the thing that I'm looking for. Oh shit, okay. I am out of subweapon ammo. Alright, hold on. Clean off the camera. Alright, well it's clearly not here. Because this is this is the corner. So it might be in the opposite corner. just gonna haul ass over there. Haven't been disappointed yet? Nice. Like, what's even the the kind of gameplay of those is it is it like a 4x game but in historical with some sort of historical timeline or is it like the the total war games because that's a, those are kind of a blind spot as far as my knowledge goes dang I'll probably pass by it like a few times too. <laughs> uh Uh, 
I don't see it here. Okay. All right, mission objective, where are you? Politics. Huh. From the country, total mill is the same. It's interesting. Okay. Man, every everything's flashing right now on the bottom center. <laughs> uh And it's not here. What the hell? Uh So it's it's the Sims except you occasionally push your Sims out of the out of a window instead of put them in a pool and take away the the exits. And a lot more inbreeding. What the hell? Where... Where is this? <laughs> I... God, it must be in like a, a part of the map that I cleared out and then just immediately left. But I seem to recall it... The objectives were always in an area with some other enemies in it, and... and I wasn't anticipating problems in this, this level. And it's probably because everything turns red whenever I get to the area with all the enemies in it. There it is. Okay. The nightmare's over. We found the thing. Okay. Great job, Oscar 3. <laughs> Nailed it. Okay. Okay. Tool supply, 23k. Okay. Alright, we did it. Special order. I am now a sergeant. Okay. I I think in order to get the the promotions in, in the single player, you have to reach a certain point threshold, I think. I can't remember if it mattered, though. I don't know. The, the, this game does something weird with the campaign, if I remember correctly, from like reading through like an FAQ decades ago, literal decades ago, um, that I think like the back half of the, the campaign is locked behind rank, I want to say. Um, your pregnant wife had cheated on me with the vassal, threw in the dungeon, went to war, tortured him for fun, lopped off his head, and became his heir. <laughs> Plot to kill six year old, got lost in the woods eaten by wolves. Nice. I I didn't know it got that in depth, but good lord, okay. Yep, Corporal Ah is ready for duty. Ah five, the fifth. Alright, successfully recovering the stolen cases. Gain their pursuit of the last strategic target. So this this one is the really dumb mission. The the, the especially dumb one. Uh, giving up the rail guns. So I still don't have access to rail guns at this point, unfortunately. Be nice if I did, because that would make these things a lot easier. Um, approximately 20 mission, 20 minutes. Yeah, right. Uh, so I didn't use my supplies yet. 
Okay, so this this is the one. Yeah. What I mean by dumb mission, it, well, you'll probably see, but... So for this mission, you have to go into this canyon here. And, um... I believe it's the the canyon in the, the upper left of this map. Um, that's where the, uh, the enemies are hi hiding out. I think that's where it is. And in order to get there, you have to navigate these really narrow um, canyons that can only fit, like, one or two VT side by side. And your dumbass teammates have no sense of that being a thing. The, their AI is only designed for big open areas, I guess. Even though th they made this mission. Um, and... Well, you'll see what happens, but it's it's really stupid. Um, okay, so... What do I need to do here? I need to... I think I'm good with chaff. I'm just trying to think if I want smoke or not. Because the, the very end of this mission, you need to go up to the, the big door for the bunker, and then turn around and get the fuck out of there. Otherwise, you're just gonna get like two shot um and i don't remember having to use smoke last time so i think i'm i think i'm good like this okay and now we'll now we'll see what i mean by really stupid uh really stupid teammates hey Ed. okay because you can really only count on your teammates for the first like fourth of this mission and then they just they just run into walls okay all right oh also while i'm thinking of it um in the discord somebody mentioned that they were sad about not having a, a previously from previously on la anymore I was actually considering, at some point, um, maybe in a week or two, uh, trying to do Hell Temple. Like, looking up a guide for how to get to Hell Temple, and then when I get into Hell Temple, try and, try and beat it blind. That, that's what I'm, I'm considering. Because that's, that's also a big part of the Lama Lana 1 experience. Because I'm pretty sure you can you can reasonably do um hell temple blind once you're in there um correct me if i'm wrong here but the the hard part of hell temple or the the the, the dumb part of hell temple is fulfilling all the really specific dumb things you have to do to get into it but once you're in there i'm assuming i can i can probably do it blind reasonably right And that the really, the really dumb specific, you have to do this thing in this order, then this thing, and this is this thing. That part I'm just going to look up. But I'm running on the assumption that once I'm in there, I'll be good to, good to go blind. Yeah, possibly more Lam Lana. Yeah, until we get to the, the sequel. Because I, I do have the sequel. But that one I'm not even going to attempt for. Probably not until next year. Um... Okay, so we're we're still kind of out in the the open area right now, and you can see there there's the the mountain starting to pop in. And this is this is also the first the first mission where we've got substantially more difficult enemies okay all right so i'm just gonna hang out over here on the right and i'm gonna let my teammates uh tank some shots for me the stuff in unlocking health temples like that i, I don't know exactly what you mean by that uh, are you saying it's very likely I will need additional help 
once I'm in Hell Temple. And I should just give up the idea of trying to do Hell Temple blind, and it's more going to be execution should be the thing that I'm I'm worrying about rather than trying to puzzle through all the the stupid shit you have to do once you get in there. Because that'll probably be hard enough, right? Because that, that's kind of just what I really want to know is, if, is it a reasonable assumption that I might, may or may not, still need a guide once I'm in Hell Temple? A guide and or spoiler council advice. Because that, that'll just determine how I, how I handle the playthrough. Or how I handle playing through that part. Okay, so my teammates are currently just strafing in place here, and... Yeah. Hey, they actually, they got a kill. Alright. Well done, teammates. I need to give you a little bit more credit, teammates. Okay, let's see if you can make it around this corner. No. Okay. Well. They did something. Hey, Cloud Zach. <sighs> okay. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll give it a go then at some point. So my my teammates are currently they're still stuck on that that little turn back there. And that's, that's probably where at least one of them is going to stay for the rest of the mission. And it looks like the one... The one behind me. Yeah, so one, one made it clear. Alright. And this is also one of the missions that you need to, um, you're going to want to resupply in. Uh, let's see. Northwest. Uh, trying to remember exactly what the procedure was for this. I think for maximum points, you wanted to kill this, this VT. Um, call for a resupply. And then go get the ones on the other path. Oh, it looks like both both teammates have cleared that uh, cleared that turn. They might actually be joining me here. It'd be an actual miracle if they do. Master, this is Oscar 3. Do you copy? Over. This is Wagon Master. Oscar 3, what is it? This is Oscar 3, requesting supplies. Send supply chopper ASAP. This is Wagon Master. Roger that. The supply chopper is on its way. Okay. And then you need to not not leave the area. Otherwise, Wagon Master will get lost and upset. And also possibly shot down. So let's see. Anybody watch that uh, that Nvidia presentation from the other day? And are thinking of thinking of getting a three thousand series? So I know those are going to be pretty expensive, but hey, you know, if you're looking for a solid investment, though, I would suggest just buying one and flipping it on eBay, because those cards are only going to be sold um, in very limited quantities until early next year. So if you want to be that guy, um, then, then grab one, <laughs> then, then resell it. If you want to think of it like an, an investment like that, it will probably be a quite solid one to immediately buy and then flip it. Like, I, I have a feeling 
the 3090s, they they retail for 1500. Those are probably going to go for at least 2 grand. If I had to, if I had to guess. <laughs> A 1080, nice. 1080 will still still do you just fine. Um, and there's actually a lot of 2080 TIs uh, if you're fine with uh, like a used card. You can actually get a 2080 TI for like $600 now on the used market. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm actually, I'm debating. I'm debating whether or not I want to get a 3080 or a 3090. Because <laughs> like, I, I've almost always gotten the... Um, the kind of lower lower tier cards in the past every single time and ended up usually regretting it like i'm leaving performance on the table um because i i end up usually reselling my old cards uh selling them once i upgrade and i think now is kind of where i want to break that cycle and just uh, just get the the best one right from the get-go and then I'll be good for years, like two years. Oh. As long as I pay attention to the... Shit. Um, pay attention to the rumor mill of when the, the new cards are coming out and time everything right. And probably won't take a bath on, on the value of the cards. Okay, so... Up over this way. I am legit shocked that both my teammates actually made it over here. <laughs> actually, wait, that's only one of them. Where's the other one? Which one are you talking about? The uh, 3080 Ti? Yeah. Um, I, I've heard rumblings that the the 3080 is going to have a 10 gig as the standard one and then a 20 gig variant of the card. Um, and honestly, if, if you're going to get a 3080, wait, why am I going over here? This is not where I want to go. Um, if you're getting a 3080, 10 gig will suit pretty much all of your needs because once you get up past there uh, you're going to be doing one of two things really like really 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 high res gaming like 4k 4k plus 4k and 8k um because those cards can do 8k um or you need that memory for like deep learning and and scientific slash work things um then sure go for the go for the 20 gig but I don't know. I don't know if, if for a card like that, if 20 gigs would really make sense. Unless it was like a, a higher speed tier of memory, because then sure. Sure, fine. Um, yeah, I, I think in that case, I would probably just save the money for, um, for something like that. Screwed up in reservations for TSMC. Yeah, that, that's why the cards are going to be in such low supply. Um, because, yeah, there's TSMC and I think Samsung. Uh, they're actually doing Samsung fabs for the, uh, um, the current run of cards. And the yields, um, the amount of usable chips that they get from, from a big silicon, that's, that's the yield of it. They're not getting as many chips as they would like, usable chips. Um, and that's why, that's why things are going to be in, in shorter supply than they would uh, prefer. Okay, so this should be uh, a Vitz. Yep, okay. Actually, I thought there were... There were supposed to be... Okay, no, that's that's the bunker. Okay. I could have sworn that there was giraffes. The little... Mobile... Trash can things in front of this thing, but... Nope. Okay, so that is, that is the thing I need to get to. So... 
at this point, I need to run in front of that thing um, as quick as I can and then um, and then exit the map back the way that I came as quick as I can. Uh, and then also, so we're going to put that on tuner one because the our commanding officer is going to message us once I get close enough to the place. Okay, so this is this is the part that's that's actually difficult to this mission. Okay. All right. So I got to have my hand on that chaff button. Three here. I read you, Argus. Over. This is Argus. We have verified the transport visuals at the enemy's facility entrance. Well done. Pull out. Argus, please repeat. This is Argus. We have verified the transport visuals at the enemy's facility entrance. The full reconnaissance is pull out. I copy. Oscar three. Fall over. Okay. All right. We're safe now. I just gotta make it back. <laughs> but yeah. Um, also, the other thing is that uh, um, the uh, the next gen AMD CPUs are also going to be coming out in the near future. Um, and from, from some of the, uh, the benchmarks that have kind of slipped out on those things, those are also going to be a, a good upgrade. And even from like the 3000 series CPUs. Um, and I, I really hope those come out sooner rather than later because man, my, my main gaming computer is really annoying me with, uh, how sluggish it's become. So can't wait to, uh, to upgrade to those. Next until gens can be very good. I hope so, because they, uh, they're the things that they were always good over AMD on, um, like in the the high end of gaming. That that gap has been closing. <laughs> And also the other thing is that I'm hoping that um, Intel or AMD, whatever, that they put out way less heat because my, my old Intel chip that I got running right now, once I put any load on that thing, my room just heats up like that. So, <laughs> oh boy. Uh, okay. So now the, the next mission is where things actually get more difficult. So we have to infiltrate that bunker. And then I'm trying to think, did I even did I ever get past this mission before? I think this is this is the mission that that got me every single time. Hmm. And it was right at the end too. Right at the end. Um Okay. We want some supplies. Okay. Some unique video encoding features. Well, as somebody who does a lot of video encoding, uh, Intel's QuickSync is no better than than Nvidia than than, than CUDA. <laughs> And even in like uh, NLEs, um, like Premiere and whatever, uh, they used to only be able to use Intel encoders for that, but not anymore. Now you can just use AMD, NVIDIA, whatever um, for video encoding in, in those nonlinear editors. 
and so there's there's no advantage anymore <laughs> and intel hasn't updated their um their quick sync like sdk and all that in years and it still looks like shit so <laughs> so there's no reason to use quick sync um okay uh so that's reinforcements okay all right, so you still want to use the prominence, but I want different gear, I think. So TR, no. So I, th I think I want the, the extra armor for this thing, for this mission. Oh, what? You can't. I guess you don't have it unlocked this early in the in the campaign. Okay, I guess I can't. Never mind. Um, standard over. So I'm I'm trying to remember how many machine gun things I needed. Um, probably eighty. Sixty four gigs RAM. Yeah. Well, that's that's getting to be kind of the what you kind of need nowadays. Um. Yeah, missiles, howitzer. <sighs> yeah, I think I'm okay with this. And then I'm gonna... I'm gonna ditch a fuel tank halfway through. So being... being overweight's not really gonna be an issue for this. Hmm. Okay. All right, I think that'll work for that. Okay. All right. I need to step away for a minute here, so I will be back. Actually, there there's already hard data um, on CPU bottlenecks at this point. And I believe if you... Uh, the 4790K, I think, is kind of the um, the baseline for, for some of the articles that I've seen of... Of hey, I, I bought a 4790K when it came out. What can I expect? Um, same video card for both things. What can I expect going to like a 10900K or a, a 3900X? And you can actually like double your frame rates just going from a 4790K to not even like a top end CPU right now. <laughs> like that's that's how big the bottleneck is. All right, let's do this. Okay. Because it is, it is pretty significant. Um, and I think to find those articles, you'd have to Google, like, uh, um, 4790K bottleneck, maybe? Um, I forget which sites I found it on. Maybe it was Gamers Nexus? Like, they, they usually do, do good reporting like that. Um... But yeah, that, that data is totally out there, and it's like, it's like double the frame rate in modern games. How long's in three? Well, I, like, I, I don't want to be that guy, uh, and, and be like, if you, if you get put in the cycle of, hey, the next, next greatest thing is going to come out, just wait for the next greatest thing, you're going to get stuck in that loop constantly. <laughs> so at some point, you just, you just really got to, got to pull the chute and go, okay, now, now is the time. Just, just go do it. Just go do it rather than keep waiting. Because that, that's just a reckless cycle to get stuck in. Like, I, I've, I've been waffling about that, too. Because um, I have... The, what I'm using now is a 7820X, uh, an Intel system. And, man, the 7820X, I thought it was going to be a good purchase um, back when I got it. And, God, it it wasn't even good when I got it. <laughs> and now it's, it's aging like cheese. Like bad moldy cheese. And I've been... I, like I with the the 2000 series I thought maybe I should upgrade to that 
and and the, with the, the Ryzen 1000 series, so that maybe I should upgrade to that. And then the 3001, I was this close to get to 3950X. And then it's like, hey, the 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 4000 series is coming out. I'll wait for that. That's why I'm I'm making the stand now. I'm getting whatever the best uh, the best one is by the end of the year, <laughs> whatever that is. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, the thing that this mission does differently, the um, there's actually some new enemies in this uh, in this map in this level that don't show up on the radar because uh, there's actually an enemy like right here, but the radar only shows one over here, and it's it's the one off to the left is the the troublesome one. Christmas for the cutoff. Well, like, it doesn't have to be exactly on Christmas for something, especially if you're if you're waiting for sales. Because if, if you're not going to get something during, like, Black Friday, um, then it's, it's probably best left waiting until... Okay. This this guy over here. This is this is the one that'll give you the business. Yeah, the Jarlax. Okay, so the Jarlax. You want to get right up in their grill. And do that. This is this is going to be the only reliable way to get rid of these things. Your next build is focused on being quiet. Yeah. Um, actually, on that note, um, as far as fan selection goes for those, you probably know about Noctua, um, like the the ugly ugly tan and brown fans as being like the really high quality ones and super quiet. Um, there's actually a brand called Arctic, um, like the the Arctic. F12, I think, is the model. Um, those fans cost a third of the price of one of the Noctua fans, and they perform pretty much identically in terms of airflow and cooling performance. And uh, quietness-wise, sound profile-wise, they sound damn near the same as the Noctua's. So if you're in the market for, for making your system quiet and, and getting some nice quiet fans, get those things. <laughs> like on on Amazon, um, there's a five pack a five pack of those really high quality quiet fans from from Arctic. Um, it's thirty three dollars plus like I think three dollars shipping for five fans, and that's like a fan and a half of Noctua fan money. <laughs> so so go with those. Go with those things. And make sure to get them before everybody starts buying them and they, they raise their price. <clears throat> oh, you bet they're sleep bearing? They might be. Uh, you mentioned that because of what? Durability concerns? Because I, I have Noctua fans that are starting to, starting to wear out on me. So those things, those things are not immune to, to wear and tear. Um... Okay, I'm trying to remember... Uh, how did the rest of this mission work? So I think I only have to, to take out the guy right here at this bottleneck, and then I'm, I'm good to go in there. Long term 24-7? Yeah, that's that's pretty much how my servers are set up, and... Yeah, that is, that is a concern. Alright, team. Alright, team. You can do it. Oh yeah, I, I know what a bad fan sounds like too. <laughs> All those cool, like, transparent fans with LEDs in them from 2004. Those, uh... Those don't really stand the test of time, turns out.
All right, where do I go from here? Uh, I think I go left and then make a right. Okay. 200 millimeter fans are a mistake. Yeah, the um, the case that I'm using, the the HB Evo, I think is what it is. From uh, from Cooler Master, it's got a uh, it's got a mount for like a 360 millimeter fan or some ridiculous enormous one right at the top of it. And yeah, I've been looking at um, like I've been considering putting together a uh, like a mini ITX uh, mini ITX case just for just for gaming. And like the a, a custom water cooling loop for it to uh, to help with cooling and all that. And man, custom water cooling stuff is just still so expensive. Like even with all the the amount of people involved in it, like just just a water block still costs more than an entire AIO combined. Like it's ridiculous. And cooling performance wise, it's it's not that much better. <laughs> okay. American trucking simulator, yeah. It is his future trucker. Uh, yeah, and then this is this is where the giraffes are. I thought I, I thought my health indicator was a different thing. That was my gear shift indicator I was looking at. Fuck. Okay. Well, I didn't. I didn't die. All right. That's fine. And more importantly, more importantly, I did not use up my supply drop. So it could have been worse. It could have been worse. And I was kind of expecting to die there, anyways. Um. Yeah, if I don't eject in time, if I don't if I don't hit this button in time, like you can actually see it flashing when it wants me to eject. Um, if I don't hit that button in time, it deletes your save, and you have to start completely over again from from mission one. Um, but the supply count in the upper right there, it still says times one. So at least I don't have to buy one of those. I do have to buy another another uh, prominence though. <laughs> So I still have 21k credits left over, but I need to not do that if at all possible. Um, but I think I think one of the Jarlax gave me the business, and there's not much I could do about that. Okay, because those those Jarlax like they they don't show up on the radar. Um, they take a ton of hits to kill, and they hit like a truck. So. Those things you got to be really careful with. And that was actually right before I was about to resupply and get all my stuff back to. Like right after I killed those giraffes. That would have been when I resupplied. Oh well. Oop, okay. Slightly too early. All right, team. Let's try this again. But yeah, the um, the thing to the left of the gear shift indicator, that is the that is your health thing. So it looks like I I that's supposed to be four bars of health.
And then I'm I'm not sure what that gauge is to the left of that. Maybe that's a speedometer? No. I don't know what that is. There's a lot of weird arcane shit in this game. Wagon Master, this is Oscar. No, not Wagon Master. This is Oscar 3 to Oscar 1. Do you copy? Over. This is Oscar 1. What is it, Oscar 3? Oscar 3 to Oscar 1. I'm under heavy attack. Request reinforcements. Oscar 1 here. I'm on my way. Just hold them off till I get there. All right. Oscar 1, gonna come save me. All right, and that's the one closer to me. Okay. So this, at the very least, gets one of my teammates out of the way. And I can go fight that Jarlax one on one. Okay. But yeah, water cooling. Still way too expensive. <laughs> like, I know Corsair pretty recently um, put, out, uh, put out their line of, of custom water loop stuff. And you think, like, once you get a major player like them into it, they might help push down the cost of stuff like that but nope it's it's in some cases even more expensive than the the smaller providers <laughs> all right don't fall over in front of the jarlax that would be embarrassing okay All right, let's go give him the business. And I'm already down... down to health. Nice. Of course, my Argus one not going to help me. <sighs> okay. Oh, man. This is Oscar 3 to Oscar 1. Do you copy? Over. This is Oscar 1. What is it, Oscar 3? Uh... It's only giving me the I need help option. This is Oscar 3 to Oscar 1. Do you copy? Over. This is Oscar 1. What is it, Oscar 3? Oscar 3 to Oscar 1. I'm under heavy attack. Request reinforcements. Oscar 1 here. Alright, Oscar 2. Go get him. Go get him, buddy. <laughs> uh. That is the wrong way. Alright, so so this is this is what I meant when I was talking about the stupid teammates earlier. Alright. You can do it, buddy. Like, I... I don't know what they were thinking when they... When they designed this area. Because it, it looks like... Your teammates can, can negotiate these just fine. When there's no enemies around. And then they switch into their combat mode. And then just forget how to... How to walk. Perfect. 
great. I am already dead. Just like that. Dude. <laughs> Just like that. Three hits. That I tried to dodge. I tried to dodge those, by the way. And and you're dead. Just like that. That's how hard the Jarlax hit. And there's like 20 Jarlax in this mission, by the way. With most of them being being required. Oh boy. So you can you can see why this was kind of the the the, the roadblock last time I played this. Because I just got stuck on this level. <sighs> Maybe I should get rid of that second machine gun. Because maybe, maybe that's why. Because I'm just slightly overweight from the beginning. I'm trying to think of exactly what I did last time. Actually, does smoke go overweight? It does. Okay. Alright. Well, let's try it again. Okay, so I have the supply count. One... Okay. Alright, surely this time. Things will be different. Probably. Oh, man. This game's brutal. This is only on the, the second of, like, four or five difficulties, too. It apparently gets substantially more, more difficult than this. Alright, this time, I'm gonna let my teammates go, go take the heat for me. <sighs> and there is a time limit to this, so it's not like I can, I can just wait around for too long. Oh boy. Warp sound from Pokemon Snap? Yep. Actually, one of the weird things, the uh, thing that's been weirding me out watching the NBA playoffs is that uh, one of the teams, the Denver Nuggets, every time they, they hit a free throw for one point, um, like a lot of teams play like a Mario sound effect, like a coin sound effect or a one-up um, over the PA system when they're playing. For that team, they play the Game Boy Advance um, like startup sound. The bring. It's, I don't know, for whatever reason, that just weirds me out every time I hear it. Like, did my, did my Game Boy Advance suddenly turn on or something in my, the storage box for it? Like, nope, that's, that's coming through the TV. Like, the sound it makes when you, when you turn on the, the power switch and it, it does the, the little Nintendo logo. It's bizarre. That they, they chose to use that sound effect for their the free throws. Okay. Alright, teammates. Go catch some bullets for me. I could theoretically just run past everything. But doing that without getting shot in the back going to be difficult. Plus, I miss out on all the points, which I kind of need at this point because I've already lost um, 10,000 points already. And I think the most I've gotten in a mission was like 11,000, so I might be able to just barely break even. Almost inclined to just let this let this Jarlax 
go after my teammates, so we'll we'll try this. Not even gonna bother with the Jarlax. Because who knows, maybe they'll be able to handle that thing. <laughs> Probably not. That wasn't so bad. <laughs> okay. 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 I think I did it. Okay. So my teammates are are doing what they do so i'll i'll just let them do their thing okay so i still have all of my health i can't remember if there's a jarlax around the corner um I don't see any. Okay. All right. So I just need to not get blown up by the the giraffes at the the front of the bunker, and then I'll be good to go. It looks like at least one of my teammates has survived the the jarlax. But it's not like they can they can go into the bunker. I think they actually despawn once I enter the. The bunker area. Oh, they both survived. Okay. <laughs> sure. But yeah, once once I get into the second second half of the mission here, they can't even go into the bunker with me, so whatever. is the range. Okay. All right. Oh, we did it. Is California still on fire in the state in general? Yes. In my area, not as much anymore. Um, like it, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't smell like smoke as much around here now. Um, and there aren't constant, uh, Wagon Master, this is Oscar three. There aren't constant sirens anymore, which is nice. This is Oscar 3, requesting supplies. Send Supply Chopper ASAP. This is Wagon Master. Roger that. The Supply Chopper is on its way. Okay. But yeah, there's um, some of the, like, the really big fires are still going on, um, like, north of me. The, 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 the ones that are called complex, that have complex in their names, usually means a bunch of little fires all joined into one big boy one. Um, and those, those ones are still burning. Um, but like the one nearby me, not anymore. Uh, 
All right. So now the real a difficult part of the mission starts. We'll be out of force right now. Well, that's that's kind of the problem. Is that there? Uh, the region has this um, this cycle that it gets into of fire, which burns out everything, which um, uh, helps harden the harden the soil. I think is what happens, and then it it rains, which causes uh, flash floods. Um, so that's that's the next bit of it, and then you have like a year or two of vegetation regrowing from the fires and mudslides. Um, which then dries out the next year, and then it, it becomes super uh, fire-prone again. And it's generally like the areas... It, it's like crop rotation in a bizarre way. Like, <laughs> like some parts of the state are in their, their flash flood phase, and some parts are in the, the literally on fire phase and, and all that. And that's just, that's just part of California. That's, that's just how it is. Um, okay, so... Okay. So when I open this door, I'm pretty sure there's a Jarlax... Um, to the right of here. So I need to... Open this, hop to the right... There isn't. Okay, never mind. Oh, there is these things, though. Alright. Yeah, the the thing that caused most of the, the big fires this time was a um was a heat lightning storm. So instead of the uh, like a traditional storm that has like um, comes with rain and moisture and all that and then lightning with it, um, this time it was just just lightning. There was no moisture, no water at all. It was because of this weird confluence of of like hot air and and something else is what caused the um, the fires to start this time. And man, it w with no. Uh, with no water, no rain to help put any of that out. That's that's when it got really out of hand. Okay. Alright. Oh, I forgot there's a trick to this. If you use the manipulator... Oh, I just barely got him. Okay. Um, there's some rain, not where I was, like, the, the lightning around my area, it was nothing but, uh, nothing but lightning. Because I, I went outside, I thought it was weird, like, what, what are all these blue flashes outside my window? And that was the other thing that was weird about it, the lightning was blue. Like, the, the whole sky would light up blue every time there was a thunder flash, rather than, than just white. Um, so that was unusual. And I saw that at my window, so I went outside and took some video of it. Um, and then all the lightning around here was um, uh, off over the ocean. So I probably could have got some pretty sweet footage, but I did not want to be struck by lightning for for a cool video clip. So I did not go over to the, to the beach and get a, a video of that. Okay, there's going to be a giraffe that comes around the corner here. Got him. Okay. All right. So, see, so yeah, I forgot that there was a trick to how you have to do the um, the things for this. So, so right here, this this is the big gun um, on the main weapon. If I equip the blowtorch thing, it actually puts away your main weapon. And we'll only let you use this, and this is the, the melee weapon. Um, and you can see it takes a second for that to actually switch out from your, uh, your machine gun. But if you use the manipulator, 
you can actually get access to your main weapon much faster that way. I forgot that that was a thing. Um, okay. <sighs> yeah, the lightning was actually pretty tough to, to look at. Okay. It was like watching watching a movie on your phone in a dark room. Like I was watching uh, um, on HBO. God, what did I watch? It was the the Queen movie, Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody. I was watching that last night because that's uh, that's not going to be on HBO for too much longer, and I hadn't seen it yet. It's a great movie. And there, there's some parts of that where it's like, <laughs> hey, here's a strobe light for like 10 seconds. <laughs> Great. Okay. Oh, shit. This part. I remember this part. Um, so there's going to be a bridge here on the right side. And there's going to be a shitload of those, the giraffe things. Um... Oh my god, I remember this. And I can't I can't be hit by any of those, or else I'm just gonna get blown up. Okay. Am I gonna hit? I missed every single one. Nice. I missed every single one. <sighs> yeah, you have to keep your TV on on low brightness. That's what I have to do for my OLED. Um, like I I have to turn it up to higher brightness during streams. Otherwise, I can't see what's going on. But uh, um. But yeah, when I'm when I'm not streaming, I have to I have to turn down the brightness. Did I see the Half-Life Alex speedrun? Nope. Because I'm I'm pretty sure they only show those on Twitch, and I have not been on that site for three and a half years. So <laughs> if it's on there, I haven't seen it, and I'm not sure if they post those to YouTube in a timely matter anymore. I think I saw some gifs on Twitter, though, of, like, somebody crawling around the ground. I assume that's what that's from. Oh, it's on YouTube now? Nice. Okay, I might uh, give that a look. Because, yeah, from the gifs that I saw of, like, a guy crawling around, that seems a little crazy. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm definitely not doing the speedrun for that, then. Good lord. Okay. So I, I have to take out all of these before I go on to the next area. Otherwise, you'll just get immediately killed. Okay. Let's literally crowd walls. Yep. That, that sounds like a VR speedrun to me. Okay. Come on. Come on. Okay. There we go. All right. Good. I'm trying to remember if there's a Jarlax here or not. Uh... I can't remember if there's <laughs> Jarlax here. Um... Okay, so I have the rifle equipped. Okay. Let's... Just in case there is, I want that. Okay. No, no Jarlax. Okay. Oh, that's right. There was, um... There's... 
those things over there. You can't do if you're too short. Nice. Well, there's um, there's some sort of height compensation thing in in Steam VR. I want to say. So that uh, that should be less of an issue. Okay. So there was there was some sort of unlock I want to say in in one of these. And there was definitely a Jarlax behind at least one of these doors. So there's a time limit for this, so I can't be screwing around too much here. Okay. Alright, so there was... There was, like, a button or something that I had to hit. I don't know if it was here or... Or what. I think it was this... Yeah, this thing. And I think this was just for an extra unlock. Yeah. Oscar 3 here. I read you, Argus. Over. Oscar 3, we have verified the transport visuals. The BT individual appears to be their new type. We're dispatching a salvage unit. Continue mission. Argus out. I copy. Oscar 3. Okay. Ah, so the, the game's kind of compensation kicks in. I see. Um. And then I could have sworn there was... There was a switch I needed to hit. In one of these rooms. And I think only one of them had a Jarlax in it. No! <laughs> I don't think you even need to go into that that room. But I think you have to kill all the Jarlax in the base. <sighs> well, it, it it's not actually a stealth mission because I, I think you have... Yeah, you have to take control of the VT testing facility. And I think it, in order to, to have the game think that you took over, you have to take out all the VTs in it. I think you could probably actually leave most of the um, the smaller uh, giraffes alone. But I think all of the Jarlax inside the underground base have to be killed. Which... Oh, man. Oh, I haven't been marking deaths, have I? So this was like... That was the third... Third death or something? So... Great. Okay. Well, at least we made it that far with that that thing. Oh, God. Well, the, the problem was is that I was trying to turn. So what I should have done there, in hindsight, I should have hit the override button. Like, the second you see a Jarlax, you have to hit the override button and, and kick it into to go fast. Go fast mode. 
because I was I was turning at the same rate of speed that the Jarlax was, and it just had a slightly better angle to me um, at the start of that encounter. So if I had the edge there by turning on override, then that probably would have gone much differently. Uh, okay, so same deal here. I need to wait for my teammates to go and um, go and fight the Jarlax, and then I will go off on my own. Oh boy, but yeah, this this level, this level's rough. It's like this level and the boat level are kind of the two the two gatekeepers from what I've read in this game. And then from from the levels ahead of this onwards, it's not a big deal. <sighs> yeah, and it's a long level. It's not only difficult, it's also super long. Um man also, the, the LED for second gear on my controller isn't working anymore, so great. There's another LED I need to change on my controller. Uh, like, they must have used really cheap components in this controller for the LEDs to be burning out. It's like... It, I, I doubt the previous owner to this game probably played it hundreds of hours or anything, otherwise they probably wouldn't have sold it. Um, and that's just... <laughs> LEDs don't burn out that quickly. But luckily enough, they're easy enough to change on this. They're just these through-hole LEDs that are easy enough to change. But it sucks that you have to do it in the first place, because... LEDs should last longer than... Probably less than a hundred hours. Like, come on. Okay. Uh-oh. Yep, more than 12 hours, 20 minutes. I have a feeling that the previous owner probably didn't beat this game either. <laughs> like, this is... This is a rough game. And I know I said I, I do this playthrough on, on normal, and there is a difficulty below this. I don't know. The, the more I replay the first, like, six missions... Like... I, I just want to get to the end of this game. So... I, I think I might give this, like, one more solid attempt at normal difficulty, but if I'm just stuck on this level again, I might just put it on Rookie and just just get to the end of the game. <laughs> I only have so much patience for something like this. way yeah the novelty of the controller wore off many hours ago <laughs> to be honest actually realistically the novelty of the controller wore off in 2002 when I originally got it 
And the only reason why I bought this again all these years later was just so that I could I could finally beat the game. Because, uh, come to think of it, I don't think I ever got past the boat stage in, um... Uh... Back then when I got it. Okay. So the quicker I can get to the the bunker for this first part, the better. Did I buy supplies? Hold up. Let's... Wagon Master, this is Oscar 3. Do you copy? Over. This is Wagon Master. Oscar 3, what is it? Okay, so there are supplies available. Okay. All right, have fun with your walk, Ed. Hope you and Alyssa have a good time for your your 3 a.m. walk. <laughs> Though that's usually when I go on walks, so I know that feel. Fuck on, please. Shit. Okay. Wagon master. All right, wagon master. Do you copy? Over. This is wagon master. Oscar three. What is it? This is Oscar three. Requesting supplies. Send supply chopper ASAP. Oscar three. I'm afraid we have some bad news. We're short on supplies. Oh no. Sorry, but you have to do without them on this mission. I repeat, shortage of supplies. I didn't buy a supply. <laughs> I can probably still make this work. I can probably still make this work. Because <sighs> I didn't use the other cannon at all. Yeah, I bought... I, I bought the prominence, but I did not buy supplies. Fuck. <laughs> Wagon Master! Just, just come on, man. Come on, man. Okay. This is probably still okay. The the only problem is going to be fuel. Like if I have enough fuel to make this work. Which if I'm going to if I'm going to be using the overdrive then and I don't know. And I can't be dodging all the time either. Okay. So this is where the the Jarlax is. And then Okay. Yo. What? What is... Okay. Sure. That only took off one point of, of health, though, so... Sure, fine. Okay. <laughs> um... Alright. Good lord. That was almost... Game over there. Yep. Simple and accessible game. Well, this, this simple and accessible game was also like $200. 
when it came out. It might have been 250. Like I, I traded in most of my my PlayStation One stuff for this game, and I had a shitload of games. All for this incredible game that I only got to like level four of, and then never played it again. And then I think I traded that in too, and I probably didn't get a whole lot in trade in credit for it. I think I traded in this for uh, enough to get like two new Xbox games. Like I think one was uh, Knights of the Old Republic was one of them. And then the other one was something really dumb. It might have been like the Matrix game. <laughs> oh boy. Solid purchase decisions. Okay. Two hundred, yep, that Yep. So I need to play Kotor one and two? Yeah, both uh both of those are great games. Those are actually on, on phones now too. If you wanted to play those play those on the go. They occasionally go on sale for like a dollar on the on the Play Store. <sighs> okay. Oh, well, an Xbox. Yeah, well, that would be that would be the platform to do it. Yeah, I'm not much of a mobile gamer either. That said, I'm actually looking into uh, upgrading my phone, and I might actually get a a gamer phone TM. One of the one of the Chinese models. Because the for the the price and the specs and what you get is quite a deal. And you can unlock the bootloader and root them to uh, to get rid of any potential security things on there. <laughs> The thing that'll kill you here is if you if you run into the wall and come to a stop here that is how you you die pretty easily here RGB cable CRT frame meister well honestly a, a frame meister doesn't really do much for for original Xbox to be honest um, especially if you have like the the HD pack and all that. Like some consoles, you don't really get that much of an improvement out of, and that generation of stuff. There's there's not much you can really do. Um, like the the biggest the biggest improvement you can get from that generation is going to be on the GameCube, with the GameCube HDMI. Um, but PS2 and Xbox. They just they don't they don't look that much better. S twenty ultra, yeah, I was I was excited about the S twenty ultra when I saw the specs, and then when I saw the price, I went hell no. But then everybody else started charging about that much for their phones. So <laughs> thanks, Samsung, you screwed it up for the whole market. Okay, so I'm almost out of fuel here. But because I didn't, um... I, 
I didn't get a supply. I need to be extra careful here. CRT most of the time? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm finding myself using my CRT less and less. Um... Because, like, an OSSC with an OLED, just whatever, unless you're really into scan lines, which I am not, then sure. Oh no, oh no, okay. Okay. Oh man, I almost, almost blew it there. Yeah, that would that would be a great use case. You don't have to share. Okay. Well, the the problem with having the the encounters right when you open the door with these things. Oh, of course the the other mech isn't in there. Um is that I I never know when it's too soon to um to hit the uh uh the melee button because I can never really tell when the um that door is all the way open okay pretty sure I got rid of all the giraffes yep okay This tank detach has been flashing at me for a while, but I'm just gonna keep it going until I'm running on empty, I guess. I'm not even sure where the fuel gauge is, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay. This is my last resupply that I got. Actually, I have enough for two. Oh, man. Fuck this level. Just fuck this level. Maybe what you're probably supposed to do there is open the door and then, like, back up and let them come to you rather than going into there. Is probably are you supposed to do that? But I'm impatient. Oh, man. Yeah, so I don't I don't have enough for another providence here if I if I screw this one up. So this is this is kind of my last go for this. <sighs> yeah, they they go through all that all that uh, the realism stuff and then hey, you could just eject inside this bunker and I guess that assumes that your teammates finish the mission. Yeah, that was the same one that got me last time. Yep. And it's not like the, the AI is consistent in this. The, the AI is about as consistent as your teammates are, which is not very. Um, so it's not like you can be like, okay, if I get within this range, they'll consistently do this. Like, frequently they don't do the same thing. So it's not like I can, I can bank on... Um, having a consistent strat for dealing with those things. 
Because sometimes when I when I open up the bunker door and there's the one right on the other side of it, sometimes it just stands there and does nothing. Sometimes it will like try and shoot a missile, and then sometimes it will it will do its own melee attack, and that's that's when you typically die too. It's like a, a double KO, um, and I'm not really sure how you deal with that. Let's see for this. I'm gonna use that one. Okay. All right. Teammates actually made it down here in a reasonable amount of time for once. And then I shoot them right in the back. Nice. All right. Good luck, teammates. Okay. I guess the nice thing about these is when they do shoot their ranged attack, they kind of squat down and don't move at all. Oh, hidden! I set up um, the Colonel's bequest for for when I eventually play that one because I think I'll probably be one of the next uh, PC games that I play, and I can totally see why you said that game <laughs> is probably not the the greatest thing to play immediately after La Milana. After I read how that game describes itself, oh man. Another Roberta Williams banger. But from the the brief amount that I played it, just to make sure it worked, the the writing wasn't wasn't like King's Quest one or two bad. And apparently she did all the writing for that one, so 
she uh, she stepped up her writing game for that one. Yeah, it's a Sierra game. Roberta and Ken Williams uh, from 1989. So right around when um, King's Quest 3? Between 3 and 4, I think. And he uses the... Um, actually, I think it uses the King's Quest 4 engine. I want to say. All right, just there should not be trouble here. Um, yeah, it, it intense. Ga I could see why, like the the way that Roberta describes it in like the README and and everything in the game. Um, it, it's one of those games where you have to pay attention to every single thing. This is Wagon Master. Oscar Three, what is it? This is Oscar Three requesting supplies. Send supply chopper ASAP. This is Wagon Master. Roger that. Okay. The supply chopper is on its way. All right, Wagon Master. <sighs> You're net shitting yourself. Yeah, it happens. All right, Wagon Master. Let's do this. Six to eight. Yep, that's how you do it. Though it could just be a bad connection to um to YouTube, because I have I have alternate feeds on my site. That if uh, if the YouTube feed isn't isn't uh, working out, then um there's there's other feeds you could try on my site. See if those work any better. Like there's a there's a low delay feed that has a um, a two second lag time from uh, from me to you, and the YouTube lag time is like ten seconds plus I think. Okay. The game is very challenging. It's called uh, The Colonel's Bequest. It's a 1989 PC game by Sierra Online. It's an adventure game, kind of like the King's Quest, uh, Space Quest games, uh, made by the same people. Um, but it's structured a little bit different from uh, from the, the Quest games in that it, uh, it's it's more like a murder mystery type game with a lot of dialogue with characters and requires a lot of like observation um, from the player more so than than hey go here and throw this bridle on this snake PCHD, yeah, yeah. That's why I gave you the um, I give out the the direct links to the uh, HLS feed, and yeah, you can you can dump those into NPC or VLC, and those should just work. Um, those are listed on my site as well. Atari port, well, like Atari ST. Because <laughs> uh, the the Atari ST, very different from like the the Atari twenty six hundred or VCS. Because the ST was like a proper a proper computer, and eighty nine that that would that would line up.
Yeah, Atari ST. No patience for Sierra. Yeah. Yeah, it, it requires a very specific mindset and... Um, and you already have to, to like games like that to really get into them. All right. Games I like to watch and not play. Yeah, I could totally see that. I'll play them for you then. It's also got some really weird copy protection too. That luckily the, the version I have doesn't have to deal with it. But it's one of those games that comes with a um it comes with a like full map um with some fingerprints on the back of it of characters, and then you have to use this red see-through thing to to look over the map and see where the fingerprints are on the map, and then at the, the start of the game you have to match up the fingerprints with with those things and it's it's weird it's very weird like a lot of games didn't go that far with their copy protection okay yeah the fingerprint thing right <laughs> the the version that i have you could just press enter to skip it and it will it will bypass the copy protection because I, I think the copy that I have from is from a uh, a later release of the game. That didn't require stuff like that. Okay, I don't think I hit any of them. <sighs> What's override not working? Huh. Okay. Okay. Oh, it is on. It just didn't light up the light. That's weird. Is that another LED dead on my controller? <laughs> I'm gonna have to bulk order some LEDs, I guess. I needed to order some stuff from Mauser anyways, I guess, so... Might as well. Game employ OneNote. Uh, for the Colonel's Bequest? Probably, yeah. Probably not this game, Th though I did, I did use one note for this though. I made this sick map of Mission Four that didn't didn't actually end up helping me because I still got lost anyways. <sighs> okay, come on, giraffes. Come on, please just, please just hit any of them, any of them. God. Okay, I'll make another pass here. Huh. Yeah, Colonel's Bequest. Very likely I'm going to have to to take some solid notes. At least that's the impression I got from from reading the, the manual and the first little bit of gameplay. Alright, come on. Come on. There we go. Okay. Good lord. 
Um, it is from 1989. <laughs> so, so it is. It is text only. And in the introduction, it auto advances text. But once you're once you're in the game, it will uh, it'll wait until player input to um to move forward. I'm trying to think of when when some of the earliest voiced adventure games were, and I think it was King's Quest V was the first one that comes to mind at least, which was geez ninety ninety two maybe. So it it took a while before before you started getting the talkies, as they were called. <laughs> okay. Man, I'm almost inclined to just skip these in 1990. Okay, yeah. Well, no, no, no. The um, that might have been the floppy version of King's Quest V. Um, it's the CD version <laughs> is the one that had voice, and I think that one was 90, 91 or 92. I want to say. Because I'm pretty sure that that's how they did that. They originally released the the disc version, and then and then later on did uh, did a CD version with voices, with incredible voice acting. <laughs> or it might have been simultaneous. I don't. I'm not sure. I know for six it was it was simultaneous of a voice and. Uh, And text only. CD92, yep. That's what I thought. And then anything earlier than that, like Dragon's Lair in the arcades, that had that had voice acting, or like proper full voice acting, rather than just samples. Um, but yeah, something from 1989 would not have had significant voice acting. Like, some games made do with the PC speaker, and it was like... For their, their voice samples. Which, to be honest, some of the early CD stuff sounded kind of like that, too. Just a little bit better. Okay, I'm, I'm really hoping that I don't actually have to kill that... Uh, that Jarlax up here, and I can just go onwards because I, I think that's probably just a bonus thing in that that other room I think that unlocks one of the other VTs in the the free mode which I I kind of don't give a shit about at this point so if I can just make it through the level that would be great Yep, impossible mission. Oh boy, was that uh, was that Commodore sixty four? Because I I, I could have sworn there was Commodore had uh, had some voice stuff. Okay, so there's there's these two rooms off to the left and the right. Um. Yeah, I think like like everything else around that time, like it was on like five or six different obscure platforms. Stay forever. But yeah, Commodore sixty four is a bit before my time, so that's that's something that I I know almost nothing about. Like I I have a C sixty I actually have a C sixty four in my closet, but it doesn't work because I don't have a power supply for it. Um. And like I, I have the I have the emulator set up for it on my my mister. <sighs> okay, I'm not sure if I even have to go into those rooms. I know 
every single other time I've made it this far, I've gotten to this final room here and then just gotten completely blown up. Um, let's see. Your data set died. Have you uh, have you tried any um, C64 emulators? Because they're they're pretty accurate from from what I've heard. <laughs> and you might be able to. Um, <laughs> You could you could take a broken one and put like a mister inside of one. Okay, okay. So inside this next room, there's a jarlax in the back left of the room, and I can't immediately get to it. And I'm trying to remember what I had to do. I think I might just shoot it from afar, because every time I tried to get it before, it would blow me up before I could properly get into the room. So I might just try to do a ranged kill on it. Actually. hell. Like... What the fuck are you supposed to do? You go in there, go for a melee, and he just murders you then. If you try and go for a ranged fight, then that happens. Okay. <laughs> and then I can't afford anything else. So this is Yeah, I don't I don't have enough supply points to even do anything. Yeah, I can I can afford one of these shitty things, but <sighs> Alright, I think that's enough Steel Battalion for today. Cause that's gonna have to start from the top. I am doing serious consideration on whether or not I'm just going to do this playthrough on the easiest difficulty and just say fuck it, because this, this game is rough on normal. So on campaign... Alright, let's, let's get rid of Ah, the fifth. Because that one's going nowhere. Um, this is new. Ah, uh, the sixth. Okay, there's there's rookie and normal. Just fuck it. <laughs> I'm doing it this way. I just want to beat this game and get this out of my life. But we'll do that next time. Actually, I guess I can do this. This first level, this is easy enough. Uh, fucking steel battalion. Even after all these years. Looks like the the LED on my override button is completely gone. Ah, uh, shit. There was something... Something was weird when I replaced the LED in another... I had to replace one of the other ones. I think it was main monitor zoom in. And there was something weird I had to do with the LED. Like, it was... The LED was smaller than usual. Like, it was still a through-hole LED, but it was, like, half of the size of a regular one. 
Um. Hmm. Okay. I have to order some more components anyways, so... I might as well get those in the same order. Sure doesn't seem any different difficulty wise. <laughs> An area where you owned one video game? Yeah, especially if it was this video game. Because it cost more than than most systems did. Okay. It's order. How long can you try it? Yeah. Really bad at puzzles. Well, at least you know it's not going to be like a game you pay 50, 50 or 60 bucks for and then it's over in four hours. <laughs> like that one. That one lasted me 90 hours. And then the sequel probably going to last about as long for, for me too. So. All right. Cool cutscene. Okay. So do I have any anything different in supply points? Hmm. I think they give you more supply points than Rookie. Huh. Though there's the very poss very real possibility that Rookie Mode doesn't let you play the whole campaign. But I think at this point, I kind of don't give a shit. <laughs> so. Alright. Let's, uh... Let's cut the timer here. And I'm gonna play a game that's actually fun. 